Hello, everybody. Give me one moment to bring this up. There we go. All right. Uh, so hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Nathan West, uh, MLIS student and graduate assistant here at the ROI office. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about access to the UNCG libraries after graduation as an alumni. As someone who is going to be graduating from UNCG in about two weeks, uh, this topic has been something that I've been thinking on off and on. Uh, what kind of databases I can use, what kind of materials I can check out, where I can be in the library, all that kind of thing. So uh, to answer all these questions, uh, I've created this webinar right here. Before I dive into the information available for this topic on the website and what was thoughtfully provided by members of the staff, most of what I knew was that A, our online collection is restricted to staff and current students, and B, that there's something called a community borrower program that allows non-students to access our print collection. Now I do know a fair bit more, and let's take a look. So the first thing I want to say is there is not a huge amount of specifically alumni services available through the library. For all intents and purposes, an alum is entitled to the same access that a member of the general public is, albeit one that should know a little more about what the library has to offer. So that would include access to electronic materials, uh, the community borrow program, and how that's going to be affected by the upcoming renovations, and how to access some of those other assorted services within the library, including things like the archives and just spaces throughout the library and that kind of thing. So starting off, let's take a look at the Community Borrow Program. I want to make it clear that there have been some pretty substantial changes to the program within the last two weeks as a result of the upcoming renovations restricting access to the physical collection. The actual renovations, as far as I know, are going to be in effect uh, January 2025, and then the tower will be opening back up in the summer of 2026. I'm getting this off the website. I'm sure there are going to be changes as uh, the renovations go on. It hasn't actually started yet, so take this all with a grain of salt. Uh, but as a result of this, however, community borrowers who start or renew their plan while the renovation is underway, uh, this period started last week on the 8th, I believe, they will have their plan extended until December 10th, uh, 2027, which is the prospective end date of the renovations. Uh, borrowers will not be able to create an account online, something that I will explain in a little more detail later. and a Visa or MasterCard uh, to make the actual purchase. As far as I know, uh, cash is not accepted, but that might be false. Uh, and after that, you are free to use the resources available as soon as you get all that. Payment-wise, becoming a community borrower is about a $35 annual fee, which if you do the math is about $3 a month, which is not too bad in my own opinion, but I am obviously biased. All right. There are also some other ways that someone outside of UNCG can become a borrower. If you are a student, faculty, or staff at a whole host of other institutions in and around Greensboro, uh, you can become a borrower. This includes basically any public or private school, college or not. This includes the like, public schools, uh, what was it, Greensboro Public Schools. Uh, within about three counties of Guilford, I didn't check this precisely, but it went out to Chatham. Uh, which is about an hour away, so it's a good amount of schools around the area. You can get these borrowing privileges by showing proof of either your employment at the school or your enrollment at the school, and then getting an account uh, in much the, much the same way. Uh, and teachers, specifically in Guilford County, uh, the school system here, uh, and the other public school systems around Greensboro can get this access, along with access to the Teaching Resource Center, which is over in the Education Building. Finally, for a very specific example from a very specific public library, uh, the Greensboro Public Library has an online, sorry, ongoing deal with UNCG that if you're looking for a specific book within Jackson Library, and you don't want to go through the hoops of getting an entire community borrower account for that one material. As a member of GPL, you can check out up to five books by getting a referral letter and then bringing it up to the checkout desk. This is a little less flexible than the community borrower program and doesn't really give you as much access as yet. But if you only need a, a book or two at a time for a specific subject or something like that, it is a lot less complicated. And uh, all the restrictions that apply to community borrowers, which I'll go over a little later, uh, still apply to these referral materials. 
So let's take a look at community borrowing in general. The standard method of checking out materials from Jackson Library, which includes the main stacks, current literature, audiobooks, paperbacks, audiovisual materials, and young adult collections, that is pretty much standard. You just get your collection, bring it up to the checkout desk with your valid photo ID, and then you have it for the uh, loan date right here. Uh, this is also the case with the music library, although there are a few more restrictions and more specific rules on what kind of materials you can check out. Uh, if you're interested in that, please ask the staff there at the checkout desk at or through the online chat if you want to know more. This does exclude materials from the TRC or the Teaching Resource Center, and the general public and alumni cannot take advantage of the ILL program as well. There are also a few other materials that we're looking for uh, that fall into this category. But for loan times, there is a substantial, excuse me, there is a substantial change from what current students and staff would expect, going from semester long rental periods for as many materials as one would want, uh, to a 30 day loan with up to 25 items per account, which is something a little bit more in line with a public library. I put a little table here from uh, Jackson Library's website as well, and I will point out that DVDs have also been changed to a 14 day loan with only four out at one time. It also points out what materials are not eligible for borrowing, which are items on reserve, which are sorry, which are materials earmarked for use by professors, uh, usually for classes, bound journals, which are uh, physical copies of research materials, which are spread out across the stacks, and also usually marked as uh, in use or in building use only. So that will let you know. Uh, instructional films and equipment, uh, those are also earmarked for professors and classes and that kind of thing. And then technology checkouts, which are cameras, this headset, uh, the webcam I'm recording this on, all that kind of thing, uh, which are also meant for student use. All right, the changes that will come because of the renovation will mostly affect the main collection. And because of that, community borrowers will feel the effect of this mostly in that location. So they will be able to do the following. They'll be able to request and borrow materials from Ferguson Storage, and that's where the majority of the collection will be stored during renovations. I'm not entirely sure of the specifics on how long a request will take to fill or the exact process of doing so, but I would gather that it's very similar to the current request system uh, that we have now, which is uh, mostly an on online affair. You let them know what book you want, and they give you a 24 to 48 hour time they grab it they leave it in they have it at the checkout desk and then you can come grab it at your convenience you can also borrow newly purchased materials uh, stored within the main building uh, that's going to be the brick building that's not the tower this is most like the current setup it involves uh, the truly strenuous task of picking up a book uh, from those shelves and then taking it to the checkout desk with your photo id and then you can also freely borrow any material, well, not any material, obviously, but materials from the Harold Schiffman Music Library. This is exactly the same as it's not being renovated and there's really no change there. You can also renew materials on their library accounts for about 12 times online or in person. This is, I feel, an artifact of the renovation itself because there is that much disruption from the usual uh, thing that you would get from that $35 a year. Uh, so this is a nice change for that. Uh, to renew items, you will need to log on through the library account created when you first sign up. Uh, when you sign up at the checkout desk, they will create your account, give you all the info you need to log in. And through this, you'll be able to both renew and see the materials checked out and their due dates. Notably, uh, the excuse me, uh, the entertainment DVD collection seems like it will be completely unavailable. Uh, during the interim of the collection. And because of the renovation, the ability to become a community borrow online has been removed, uh, as has the payment button to do so. New and renewing borrowers should head to the checkout desk in Jackson Library to do so instead. This is broadly meant to prevent new borrowers from spending money on a service that is going to be restricted pretty heavily soon without actually knowing what they're getting into. Uh, this online purchase may return at some point in the future, but for the foreseeable future, creating account does require coming into the library in person. So let's move on to electronic material access. So on campus, access to the databases that we have for students uh, can only really be done through the guest computers at Jackson Library and the Schriften Music Library. If you look at these pictures, you'll see the Jackson, uh, sorry, the guest material, the guest computers in Jackson Library here and here some nice circles and arrows. 
And then over here in the Shrift Music Library, they're not in the photo, but they would be right here uh, if I took the photo. Uh, as you can, and there are also uh, a few other computers right as you walk in the front door. As you can see, there are some restrictions on time, 15 minutes for these express computers and about an hour for this one. But if there isn't anyone waiting for you, it's unlikely that anyone will begrudge you some more time on the computer. There are a few other ways to get access to databases on, and ebooks online. One of the more useful and uh, robust would be NC Live, which is a free resource available through, as the name it might suggest, any public library in North Carolina. It includes a bunch of different databases, uh, including my own personal favorite of uh, JSTOR, uh, which is a bunch of different electronic materials across the disciplines, uh, which as they're being available free, they are limited by time. Uh, they don't have anything newer than I think it is uh, three years ago, so it's not incredibly current, but it is a lot of material uh, right there, which is great. I do a lot of my research on it. There's also ProQuest Central, which bundles some of their larger interdisciplinary databases to build a very robust collection, and all of which, while not being the 600 odd databases that UNCG has access to, it is definitely a great basis for research and does provide a lot of good information for free. Outside of my own personal, uh, eh, preferences for databases. NC Life does also have CINAHL, which is a healthcare database, which is great for nurses and uh, other healthcare professionals, as well as genealogy resources, a few separate ebook art libraries, newspaper uh, and magazine archives, and also uh, consumer reports, if you're at all interested in that. Uh, it was actually kind of a surprise to me. And uh, when I make a purchase, I'm definitely gonna use it. Uh, this is all free to access from any public library with a North Carolina library card. To log in, you just need to select the library you have the card with, type in your card number and a PIN, and you should be good to go. If you have any trouble, there is a chat, email, phone, and text service, along with an FAQ, so you can troubleshoot your issues pretty easily. And though it's on the slides, I'd also like to mention Hoopla, which is under the same model, uh, being able to access it using a NC Public Library gift card, gift card, library card, my bad. Uh, and getting access to a bunch of movies, some of which are pretty recent and uh, very popular. There's a bunch of uh, Oscar rated, The Whale, and uh, I think Everything Everywhere All at Once was there once. Uh, but there are a bunch of documentaries as well and TV shows, all for free with a library card. Also, also, public libraries in general are a great replacement for the services that Jackson Library provides, uh, both in spaces available and access to digital material. Uh, like this says, slide says, please do make use of them. I use Libby, which is another uh, ebook service uh, from my old public library in Pittsburgh to get new leisure reads almost every week. And I make a guess that a lot of people in this room do the same. I've talked up NC Live for a bit, and there are always programs and that kind of thing going on in the actual library, along with the physical collection that's available and the spaces that you can make use of. All right, so that's the end of the larger access question. So I'm just gonna run down a quick list of some of the other services provided to alumni and the general public to cap this off. First off, access to spaces in the library. Alumni have access to most of the spaces that they did as a student, which includes the main study areas on the main floor and the basement, as well as the public study areas in the tower. Hours wise, these spaces are only available to students, faculty, and staff from 9 to 1 Sunday to Thursday, so alumni will need to respect these hours and plan accordingly. They won't be able to stay in the tower past 9. Uh, because of the lack of a UNCG account, uh, alumni will not be able to be able to reserve the study rooms in the tower or in the DMC. Alumni will also have access to guest printing through publicly available computers in Jackson and Schriftman Music Library. This is, will be in the reference area as well as uh, just in the main area of the Schriftman Music Library. They won't need, as they don't have access to their Spartan Flex, which is the usual way of using it, a guest printing card is provided, although you will need to pay in cash to use that. Uh, there is a photocopier available in lo both locations, along with a fax machine and a scanner. Use of the scanner is free and can either be sent to the printer or saved to an available flash drive. If you're doing the latter, uh, we would prefer that you use your own. Uh, access to the makerspace is restricted with two current uh, students, faculty, and staff. I have checked this and it is a little complicated from what I've heard, but there is no real way to take a payment without a Spartan card. So at this moment, that is what it is. All right, moving on to the special collection. 
Uh, the Martha, Lee, Martha Blakely Hodges Special Collection and Archives remains open to interested members of the community and can be accessed without being a student. Appointments are preferred and the materials sorry, do remain non-circulating. And when accessing this collection, you will need a valid photo ID. Uh, it's also a good idea to have the materials that you want to access in mind before coming in person. And there are a fair few other rules and regulations that you should just take a look, quick look at uh, before uh, coming in. Finally, access to the library chat does remain open. If you have any questions about what we may be able to do or want some research help, please give us a chat. And even though I personally probably won't be there, anybody who is will gladly help you out to the best of your ability. Additionally, feel free to contact subject librarians with research questions related to their fields of expertise. I'm pretty sure they'll do their best to help, uh, though uh, please allow for some time to respond because I am sure they're very busy. All right, that about wraps it up. Does anybody have any questions or parts that I might have skimmed over? Let me stop sharing. If you have a question, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, if you have a question, feel free to unmute and, and ask. Good presentation, thank you. Would you mind uh, just briefly repeating the information about access to fax and photocopier? Fax and photocopier, yes. Hold on a moment. So there is a photocopier available in both uh, Schiff Music Library and Jackson Library, along with a fax machine and scanner. Uh, use of the scanner is free and can be sent to the printer or saved for a available USB flash drive. If you're doing the latter, please put it your own. I don't know the specifics about use of a fax machine and photocopier beyond the fact that alumni can't use them. And it does require, uh, I think they take coins. Got it, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Are there any other questions before we stop the recording?